uh, record button so we actually get this um, webinar recorded. So good morning everyone and welcome to 2015 first Black Belt Business webinar and we're going to go straight into a hands-on session. Uh, hope everyone has been well and your year has started off well but the thing I want to always talk about any webinar, um, this webinar is, day, uh, is designed to help your life easier when it comes to your website. Uh, we take full responsibility for the positive changes to your business after implementation. So guys, um, if you could just turn off your phones, close up your Facebook and any emails. I know people are sitting there multitasking at the moment. Um, if you ever listen to my time management um, sessions, there's, you know, multitasking is a bad thing. Um, so guys, we probably need a bit of focus on this one because we are going to get a bit technical to a point. I, I want to make it easy without going overboard. Um, so reality is, bit warning now. Um, guys, the other thing is, um, if you want to raise your hands, it's around here somewhere if you want to see your full screen um, make sure you see that the minimize button a little orange arrow there um, and if you do want to ask questions and I always want you to ask questions throughout the session um, type in your answers um, in the questions box down here or type your questions sorry and um, I will answer you um, so I'll look every few minutes to see if there's anyone asking a question as we go along um, guys I won't um, I, I won't go into too much depth here um, um, most of you guys, if you don't know me, uh, multiple business owner. I, I run a school, uh, martial arts school here as well. During the evenings, 140 students. Um, I'm not a business coach. I don't like that phrase. It's too fluffy for me. Um, so I like being a business instructor. I like getting hands on with clients and making stuff happen at the end of the day. Um, and I, I want to stress on this point, um, I'm not a website developer. Um, anything you see here has just been learnt skills. Um, skills that I have found invaluable to help me make some easy changes to my website. Um, so I want to make sure that um, you're aware that we are not going to get in the techo code. I don't want to get in the techo code. That's up to the awesome web developers out there. Nothing to do with um, what we're doing today. Today is about being able to make some great changes in your site, um, showing you some really good tools, some plugins that could be used on your site if you don't already have them, um, and some other tools outside of WordPress that you should actually have as well. Um, so I want to make sure that um, you're very, very clear on that. Um, so all good. By the way, Desiree, um, you won't need a mic any which way, so your audio is just fine as long as you can hear me okay. So guys, today, ask heaps of questions. I am recording this, so if you do need to go back on this, um, you can. And as I mentioned before, this is going to be hands-on. I'm, I'm going to open up my web browser in a minute and just take you through a whole heap of areas rather than you guys just looking at PowerPoint slides and listening to me um, drown, you know, blah, 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 going like that constantly. So um, Guys, let's actually understand what WordPress is. For instance, um, there are plenty of CMSs out there and CMS stands for Content Management Systems. Um, WordPress at the moment is one of the most popular. There are a couple. There's others like Joomla um, out there and there's a whole heap of um, other proprietary CMS systems out there that you can use. But WordPress is becoming very popular for the mere fact that it is easy to use. Um, there is a lot of functionality to it. Um, and Look, if there are web developers listening to this at the moment and you're not a WordPress fan because of, you know, whatever the reasons and you prefer something else um, because you find that a lot easier to use, I'm not here to say, you know, whether Ford or Holden is best for all the people in um, America that um, or the Australians would understand what I'm talking about here. I'm not here to debate any of those. We do. The fact is WordPress is one of the most popular CMS content management systems out there um, and, you know, it is a very popular one because it can be easily changed it can be easily added to your website and you as the as a general owner of the website can make easy changes in it um, without it being too complex so um, again guys um, I'm not going to debate about what is the best CMS I know most of my clients use um, uh, WordPress and it is a very good platform at the moment and it is getting better as we actually grow so um, so you understand um, a tiny bit more regarding um, a CMS or a content management system. Um, just so you know, you have a domain name, www. 
SEO, I'm a legend.com.au or .com or whatever it is. That domain name is effectively a, a series of numbers that point to wherever your site is actually hosted. Um, and what I mean by that is your, your website and all your files are sitting on someone's host somewhere on someone's computer out in that wonderful cloud. And, and whenever you type in www com or whatever it is, it has a series of numbers associated to that. It all of a sudden goes off to find the server that those numbers are sitting on. It goes, hey, look, here's all those website files. And what it does is it then drops it down into your web browser, whether you're using Safari, whether you're using um, Chrome, whether you're using Firefox, um, Internet Explorer, and it actually translates and downloads those files from that server onto your computer. The content management system is sitting on your um, on that hosted server um, and there's two things that you need to look at you have the WordPress login and then you've got this login called cPanel um, some of them might have some different um, variations I find 80 to 85 uh, percent of people that I actually come across with websites have this cPanel um, functionality and what cPanel is is you know pretty much where your files are stored this is how you manage your email addresses um, this is how you can back up your entire site at a click of a button. This is how you do all of that. And one of the things that I want to actually take you through first, everybody, is you know, is how to actually back up the site. Let's say you want to go make a new, add something to your website. How you want to go and do something like that, um, you know. If you're going to make some changes to your site, my recommendation is backing up. You know, it takes five minutes to do. Um, it really depends on your internet speed on how long it takes to actually back up. Um, and reality is you should be backing up if you are going to make any changes to the site. One of the things that you should be asking, and this is a point that you might want to write down, and I think this is one of your first points. I would be finding out if your host are doing regular backups and that should be a question you should be asking your web developer or wherever you've got it hosted. Um, if they're not doing regular backups and there was an instance here in Australia a couple of years ago um, and hopefully no people on the line here was um, affected by it, but 60,000 websites got lost through a very large um, uh, web company, 60,000 websites gone and their backups were not working. They lost the um, server. The backups weren't being backed up and 60,000 people lost their sites. Um, it was a really massive big he um, thing here in Australia. Um, and they were actually paying um, this company to actually, you know, make sure their site and their integrity and their redundancy was actually there. So first question you should be asking your web developer is make sure your sites are being backed up on a regular basis, but you can do your own backup. Um, you've also got here setting up emails. I'm not going to go through that. Um, you know, we don't have the time to do that. Um, and domain delegation, this is where you actually put in the say whereabouts your web files. If someone types in www, I'm a legend, um, the delegation is done from your um, wherever you bought your domain name from. So that actually has a code, but when you actually get into cPanel, you can do it. Way too technical. I don't know how to do that personally. Um, I get my web guys to actually make sure that's all set up, but that that's what it's actually used for. Um, so... Um, oh, by the way, um, luckily, okay, one of the people on the call today was affected by those um, 60,000 sites that went down. And what they've said here is we had our own backup of the site. So um, pretty scary if you don't. And I know a lot of people didn't. So that was an interesting one. So guys, let, let's, um, let me get into um, starting on getting into it. I've got a whole heap of tabs open. What I've done is I've gone into my cPanel access here. Let me make this big. Um, and quite simply, what I said before, when you're actually looking in the cPanel, you can easily go in and add some new email addresses. This is how you actually do it in here. Again, I'm not going to go into it. If you want to add autoresponders to your emails, so someone emails you, you've gone on you know, a safari for the next six months around the world, you could type in there, hey, I'm away for six months. Every time someone gets an email, it automatically doesn't. Um, there are other programs out there like Exchange and all of that that will do that if you're an IT person, um, but most small businesses don't have exchange or anything some might be using gmail yes gmail does that for you but you can do it on standard accounts now one of the things on cpanel most people have access to this wonderful word called backups um, you can actually just click the backups here and quite simply um, you would come in here um, and you can actually choose download or generate a full website backup so it actually does everything um, 
as you can see here, you do not have any automatic backups generated. Your server administrator or server owner must enable this feature. So if you've got those wordings, then you might want to get automatic backups actually happening. But down here, you could partially back up. And when you look at WordPress, so you understand, um, there is a database. Every time you actually add a new page to WordPress, where it saves it, it saves it a database on here. So what you would need to do is either download or generate a, a full website backup. I'm not going to do that now. Um, you would back up your home directory, which will be back up your website files. So any images, any um, uh, themes, um, anything like that will get backed up. And then what you've actually got here is your database. So today I'm actually going to be using, which database am I going to use? Site 2. So if I wanted to back up my home directory, I would literally just click on here. It will then go off and do, you know, whereabouts do you want to save it? I'm going to hit OK. And what it's doing is just downloading that, as you can see, into my downloads file. Um, so that actually goes and backs up all your images, your themes, and all of that. It does not back up your actual pages, the content in your pages. And it's very important that you do both of these. Now, this backup here would probably be about 1.4 gig. Um, so however long it will take me to download 1.4 gig, only because I'm running like seven or eight websites on the one file it should only take literally two to three minutes to download your backup so I've cancelled that backup if you want to back up the database and this is important this is probably the most important part of it um, you would just click on the database the WordPress database that you're using if you got three or four databases in your um, in your cPanel like this I would recommend just backing up all of them they take two seconds so if I hit OK there um, you'll see that that's already been backed up it's not a big file but that actually has now taken a copy of my WordPress and put it onto my local um, directory and all of that type of stuff. So, you know, that's how easy you can actually back up. Um, now, I, I will stress one thing, everybody, if you're not au fait within here, um, one thing I wouldn't recommend you doing is going in and playing with anything. Don't go, go, don't go in the file manager. Um, don't go into any of these protected directories or, you know, prefer not to go into your PHP admin or any of your databases on the back end. Don't worry about any of your subdomains. These should be already set up. Please let your web people actually handle those. Um, it's extremely important that if you just wanted to back up your site and add an email they are you can't do much wrong um, going into these two areas here um, as long as you don't hit the restore button you're actually going to be okay my recommendation if you do need to restore um, if you do need to restore your folders um, I would get someone to actually do that for you um, I'll be honest I would actually pay your web developer to do it because reality is you're playing with some nasty nasty tools if you actually lose your entire website and then you're gonna have to pay someone want to get it fixed anyway. Um, I'm going to be honest guys, I've never had to restore a um, a website before. Um, I know a couple of my web guys that I use have had to due to some, you know, conflictions or some errors. Um, and it happens like anything. It happens like your computer can get viruses and all of that. Your websites can get viruses. Um, so reality is, you know, um, make sure you actually get the right people to do the right job, especially if it's nasty. For you to just back up your site yourself, quite easy. cPanel, in you go and off you go. Um, if you don't know your cPanel, access passwords and login details just ask your web de um, web developer or web person they should be able to provide it now I've got a question here do you pay for cPanel um, yes your hosting needs to be paid for um, there's some really big hosting companies out there um, you know my clients use most of them use um, one of my um, clients at black belt businesses who's a web developer um, he has a hosting package it's two hundred and twenty dollars Australian a um, uh, a year or 330 depending if you want um, this space usage depending on the size so it's between 220 and 330 a year um, for hosting here in Australia there are some cheaper ones out there uh, but honestly you do get what you pay for and some of the cheaper ones I've seen don't have the bandwidth um, and the bandwidth is how many times someone goes on your sites and downloads stuff that actually gets crept up um, I've got huge bandwidth as you can see I've already used two gig for the month over here um, but I've got unlimited 
unlimited disk space. So I pay the free 30 uh, for unlimited disk space and large bandwidth. Um, again, no, you know, speak to whoever you've got. There's a few people out there running the cheaper ones and that's fine. Um, they still do the job, um, but some websites won't work on the cheaper ones due to security settings and all of that. So um, you're roughly looking at that amount of money, guys. But again, I, I would chase up that. So when um, that that's probably the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is just the cPanel and backing up. Before you go and play with anything, just back up your website. It'll take three to four minutes to actually do it, um, and then you can go off and do it. I am going to show you how to back up one page. If you're just going to change one page on your website, I am going to show you how to quickly back up one page and one page only um, and go from there. So the other thing that we're going to look at now is our reporting tools. And you know, yes, you've got WordPress and this is a WordPress webinar, but I do wanna to stress to you about two tools that you should have loaded in your WordPress folder. Um, and then we go from there. Um, so if you, okay, here's another great question. So if you have a WordPress site that you have personally developed, does WordPress do the backup? You can buy plugins to do WordPress backup. So there are plugins in there that do it. Generically though, the, um, the answer is, is no. cPanel can back up WordPress as well as your database. But you can have plugins on WordPress that can actually back up your site. Personally, this is just me. Um, I, don't, um, I don't trust them. They probably work just fine. I know cPanel quite well, so I actually just back up from cPanel. It's just easier. I know I get the backup done correctly um, and efficiently. Um, now, there's another question here. What bandwidth should you be looking at? Um, guys, I actually went into one of my client sites the other day and it came up saying your bandwidth usage has been done and they had two gig. Um, what that means is a lot of people were hitting their sites. So um, it really depends on how many people are hitting your site. What I would do um, there, Sally, is log in, have a look at your monthly bandwidth and what it is and just see where you actually get to every single month and just check it once a week and just see where you're at. You've probably got enough. Um, you know, if you don't come up with a message when you go on your website, hey, the bandwidth's out, then you don't have any problems with bandwidth. So um, if you've got you know, 500 people hitting your site a day, I would suggest you'd probably need to update your bandwidth big time. Um, also, if you've got massive big images, I'm going to talk about uploading an image onto WordPress shortly. If, you've got, if you're putting high-res images at a 5 gig each on your homepage and you've got 20 of them, that person has to go and download you know, pretty much 25 gig to get to your homepage and it has to download on their computer. Don't recommend that, by the way. I highly don't recommend. And I'll show you what you do with images, and it's very important you do this with images, um, and you'll be able to see what that actually is. So, all right, guys, let me talk about two reports. Um, personally, I, I, you should use these Google Analytics and Google Webmaster tools. Um, these are some really good things. Um, your web developer um, should have set these tools up for you on your website, um, and you should be able to actually have access to these tools. Um, I'm going to just take you into Webmaster Tools first. This will actually tell you what's happening um, in your website. How many search queries in um, Google have you been having? So how many impressions? and how many clicks have people been clicking on. So um, in the last month, I've had 81 clicks to my website with 1,821 impressions. Um, over here, it will tell you, because Google has these little spiders that go out and look at all your website, and what it does is it comes back and says, but hang on, I looked at this last month, now I'm looking at this month. You used to have a page on there last month, but you don't have this page on there this month. Oh, there might be an error. Let's just wait. There may be an okay. You might be fixing it. It will come back and look at that a few days later or a week later and it will come back and says, no, that page isn't still there. I'm going to give you an error. So this will actually tell you if there's any errors in your actual site. So you can see from me, I've got six pages that aren't found. Um, and I, I got to admit, I have removed timeblackbelt.com about us. So, you know, it used, Google used to see it. It's no longer there, which is correct. Um, I've also deleted an event called Workshop Business Potential. So every time I have a webinar, I then go and delete it. Um, so it will actually tell you the video workshop shop I deleted, it will tell you if you've got any errors on your pages. It will tell you if there's any other areas that it doesn't actually like. And I use a membership program on mine. So as you can see, it's going, oops, I don't like you, go away. Um, 
and there's no server errors. So that, that's actually a, a good thing. Um, and when you go and make changes to your site, you can actually use Webmaster to force Google to go and actually look at your pages again to re-index them. So you use that as fetch and you go and add a page or you go and you know, do something to your site, you can actually go and tell Google to fetch that page um, and re-look at it again. Um, so you know, there's some really good things that you can do here with your um, uh, webmaster tools you can see a lot you can see what sites are actually linked um sorry let me go search traffic um you can actually go links to your site and see how many pages are linked so i've got youtube has 72 links to my site yellow pages have 45 links so i've got a yellow pages um ad um google has 10 links to my site pr log which is just some um, um uh, some pr programs out there um you know so i've got all these links links in here and it will tell you what who's linking to your site and if there's any bad links you know one of the things you can't have on sites is bad linking um, because that will affect your Google ranking so um, now here is the power of this one and this is what I love webmaster tools will also show you um, whereabouts you're roughly ranked in the Google index um, and what is your highest ranked search query so um, black belt business um, if someone has been typing in black belt business which is what they have that's my highest click links so people have gone to Google typed in black belt business um, I've now had seven clicks um, and my average position is 2.6 which is pretty sad I should um, go and get that changed and get an SEO person just to re-index and rechange my page to get me number one um, I've got a blog on there called is out is outsourcing ethical which is ranked number five in Google which is great you know that's a really good ranking um, and I got no SEO person to do that all I did was load up the blog and that's what's been happening um, you know um, business black belt I'm ranked 5.4 I'm having four clicks on that um, one of my mentors Tacky Moore has a black belt program um, so he comes up in my um, um, search as well black belt in business you know so these are all the searches so you can actually find out what are your highest search terms whereabouts you're ranked um, and all of that type of stuff so, you know, if I've got small business coach, I'm ranked 240. Um, again, I don't like calling myself a coach, so I don't have much of the words coach on my, my actual site. Um, so you can actually see here on your website on what is actually happening. Um, and I'm going to show you how that links to WordPress um, very, very shortly. So Webmaster Tools is a really good thing. It's really easy to load up. Um, if you do have any problems loading it, speak to your web guy and ask to have access to your Webmaster Tools. You can't break anything in here. It's actually telling you what is actually happening um, and all of that. So the other the other program or reporting tool, sorry, I'll just see if there's any questions. Nope, good. Um, the the other reporting tool is Google Analytics. Um, you should have Google Analytics on your site. You should be emailed a report every week. Um, and if you're not getting the report every week, it's very easy to set up. You just go to email to Joe Blogs um, or yourself on the email address, send it as a PDF and go, hi, here's your Google report. Have a nice day. Hit send. Um, that will actually send you then a report um, every single week. Um, and this will tell you exactly what's actually happening on your site. So um, this will say that um, in the last week I've had 18 people at my site, 15 users, they've looked at 22 pages, um, their duration has been five seconds. I'm actually, look, I've actually picked up the wrong, um, um, the wrong Google Analytic report, but that's okay. Um, uh, yes, I've definitely picked up the wrong report, but that's okay. Um, so I've actually got Black Belt Business and Black Belt Your Business, so that's what's happening there, guys. I've looked at Black Belt Business, which no one actually hits anymore. Um, it's Black Belt Your Business. But what this does is it tells you what's actually happening. You know, bounce rates is someone clicks in and then clicks out straight away. Um, this will tell you how many new people are to your site. This will actually tell you what country they're actually coming from. Um, you know, I've got four people from Russia hitting my site. Awesome. Um, you know, mostly it's coming from Australia, as you can see, which you'd expect. Um, and also what city they're actually coming from. Um, Melbourne, Brisbane only two, Sydney. So very, very good. What browsers? So you can actually find out um, what browsers and then, of course, what um, operating systems as well. Uh, is it Mac? Is it um, all of that? And then how many people on mobiles are actually hitting your site? 
website. So you can see if your website's that. Very powerful tool. You can get a lot of information from that so you can actually start your SEO um, or you can start seeing who's actually hitting your website. So two reporting tools that you need. Um, you do add them in WordPress. You do need Webmaster Tools, you don't. But Google Analytics, you need to throw a piece of code into your WordPress um, area to make sure that you actually do get this information. Um, again, if you're getting SEO done and you're paying for SEO, please be asking for a monthly report. They should be providing all of this and how your keywords are ranking, how they're moving month by month. So you should be getting that. So um, I definitely know the SEO company that I'm using. Um, it definitely gives video actual reports every single month for a quarter video um, and will actually take you through these reports and show you what's happening and how it's happening and how it's moved and all of that. So um, some really, really cool things there. So any questions on webmaster tools or analytics, let me know. But now we actually get into WordPress. So um, guys, one of the things we need to have a look at with WordPress, and let me just come back to the dashboard. Um, one of the things that you need to look at um, WordPress, here's a website that I'm actually playing with at the moment. I've, I've told my um, my martial arts head office that I'll actually run their, um, I'll build their WordPress site. Um, so I've just been playing with this. As you can see, it's just still got the Latin in there. So I haven't been playing around with it too much, but I thought this would be a very, very good, um, good um, website to use as a basic. But one thing I do want to quickly show you is when you first log into WordPress, um, here's a site that um, we're almost finished. Um, Reliablepropertyrepairs.com.au forward slash WP login. Thanks, Gail, for letting me use you as an example. The way I actually use WordPress to log in. Now, let me actually bring up Reliable Property Repairs um, and you'll get to see the, the smiling faces of David, Gail, and crew. Um, what you'll see, and this is how I love running um, WordPress, and let me give you a pretty bit of a tip. What I do is I have the login page here on one tab. I would then have the main website on this tab. Um, and I run two tabs when running in WordPress. I just find it easier. Um, what you can do is actually hit the login button here. Now, what that actually does, notice you can just see this is the main site here. Um, what it actually does is now that I'm logged into the WordPress, um, if I hit refresh, um, what it does is it now adds the WordPress login and options up the top here. So as you can see here, it's now added this link here. So I've logged into WordPress, but when you're actually on the site, when you logged in, you have the ability for you to self to come in and just quickly edit this page straight away. Um, and you can come down and you're on the main website and because you're logged in, you can click edit page, bang, straight into the back end and off you go and edit the page that way. Um, what I also do is I normally have the page that I'm editing on the one tab and then I'll actually have the page here and I'll just make the changes, update it, come to this page, hit refresh and off we go from there. Um, so that's how I actually manage um, WordPress that way. Um, and it just it's easier for me to do that. If you just want to go edit page, update, view page, um, and then you see the page, edit page, view page, blah, 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 that's fine. I just find it easier swapping between the two um, and doing it like that. Now, guys, let me um, let me highlight a couple of features with WordPress these days. Um, if you're running a, a Word, um, WordPress site um, and it's responsive, um, that means it will actually fit for any device. To check if it's responsive, what you'd actually do is just come, drag it down and make it the size of a, um, of a mobile phone, let's say. As you can see, that let's say that's the size of a mobile phone. Um, you will actually see here that it actually all looks perfect. Perfect. It's actually adjusted the whole site um, to be um, uh, to actually be on that layout. If you actually dragged it and it wasn't in that um, and it like the wording doesn't fit in and it doesn't adjust the wording, you don't have a responsive site, which means that when it goes to mobile, unless you've got a dedicated mobile site, it's not responsive. And Google actually penalize you from not having responsive sites these days. So I would highly recommend checking that if your site is responsive, um, that would be a very, very good good thing to actually go and, and have a look up to see if your, your site is responsive. So, guys, let's get into WordPress. I'll just see if there's any quick questions. Um, no, good. All right. 
Now, a couple of things with WordPress, and I want to, I, I guess if you're going to write something else down now, um, you might see these words where it says update. Um, personally, this is just me. Please don't just go and update things. Um, and a perfect example, I did a, um, I did an e-commerce site um, for someone. Um, they've gone, logged into WordPress again. Oh, there's updates. Bang. Let me go and update the site. Boom. Off they go. Um, and guess what? The new version of WordPress didn't work with the version of WooCommerce that they actually had um, for the e-commerce. And it just, it just blew the site. It literally blew the site. Um, so they didn't actually back up before updating. So guess what? Um, they actually had um, we had to actually go in, configure it, um, delete the WooCommerce plugin, read it. Uh, it was just a nightmare, guys. Um, so if you do see these words updates and you see the updates down here, um, just don't go willy-nilly and do it. Whenever WordPress is good at giving messages, you'll see messages saying the latest version of WordPress is available. Update now by clicking here. Um, just don't go and do that. Um, you just don't know what's actually happening in the back end. Um, you don't know what's been configured. You don't know what your web guy has actually gone and done um, to the back end to actually only work with that version of WordPress. If you want to do it, again, go and back up your whole site, um, then come in and do your updates. So just don't go do them willy-nilly. You just don't want to do that. Um, so be careful when you actually do see these red little identifiers. Just don't go and back up the sites willy-nilly and, and make it happen that way. Um, so as you can see, we've got the main um, dashboard of WordPress. Um, you can change this and customize this. I'll be honest, I never really use the dashboard, um, only because I'm so used to going in and just using the main key areas, um, which are pages and posts. Um, so let's put it this way. If I wanted to come and change, um, I've, I've set up this site here for some training. Um, I set up a page in here that's just going to be very basic. You'll see it be very basic come up. Um, test this page for a broken link and um, the red color is absolutely awful so I need to change some of the coloring in here um, but I, I was actually just added this before we started the webinar um, if I wanted to edit this page really really quickly I can actually just come down and hit the edit button um, again I could actually come to um, the dashboard I can come over the pages go to all pages um, and this is how you can edit it and you can go and locate the page <sighs> Do, 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 do. I should have some unhold music. Guys, yeah, I'm doing a webinar while trying to log in to um, uh, WordPress and do a whole heap of stuff. So my internet's being smashed. And here's the webinar page. So I can actually go and just click on webinar and that will take me to exactly the same thing. Now, as you can see, we've got a text area here. I can now just go and type, this is more info. Um, again, the... the um, the wording's really awful coloring. So what I might do is I might go and just change the coloring of that to white. So update. So I've now gone and actually changed that page. Again, I won't change this one because I've got to open it twice. So you can see you can just easily add words without too many um, challenges. And as it updates, I can just click on view page. Again, I'm waiting for my little circle to stop buzzing around because it's still doing stuff. And we can go view page and effectively that will um, show the site coming up. Okay, so here's a great question. Um, as you can see, I've just added more info there. Page has been updated. Have a nice day. You know, it was really easy to actually just go and do it. Um, and Rebecca's asked, when are you editing a page? Do you do it on the actual website or through the admin page? Again, that was, I could do it either way. I'm on the main website now. I'm physically on the main website here. I can just click on edit page, make the change, go view page again, and I've done it on the main site effectively. Or I can go to pages, find the home page that I want. Now, if I opened up my Black Belt business page, I have something like 140 um, posts on there and I have about 87 pages. So to actually find it on here is an actual pain in the butt. Though WordPress has a really good search function where you can come in and actually, let me just go back and have a look at uh, info. Let me actually just type in the word info and hit search pages it will actually go and look for the word info anywhere on these actual pages um, 
um, and search for it that way. So if you're finding it hard to find a particular page, you can easily just come in and actually search for it by coming in and um, just typing in search and it will go and search the whole pages and do it that way. Waiting, 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 waiting. Maybe I shouldn't have been um, smashing the um, internet today, please. Woohoo! Okay, and as you can see on the home page, the word info is there somewhere, and on the webinar page, the word info is in there somewhere. So you can see that you can actually, if you've got hundreds of pages, and I know sites with thousands of pages, you can easily search for the page um, by actually looking at something unique to the page, typing it in there, and then finding a page to go in and edit it that way. Um, so one of the things, guys, especially with editing pages, as you can see, you're just editing text. Um, let me just, how about this? How about we actually go and create a new page? Let's say that you've um, got a new uh, blog. Um, blogs you actually do in your post um, and you can just say add new. Um, but in your pages, you can go and add a new page. So let's say you've just um, developed something new. I'm gonna go add new on the page. And there's a couple of things. There's two things you need to do to it. One, you need to add the page, but two, you need to add it to the menu items. And I'm going to do both of them now so you can understand. Now, one of the things you want to do is give the page a good title because you want that title to be picked up through Google and all of that. Um, so what we'll do is we'll call this one training um, for webinar. Again, I'm not an SEO expert, so if you've got an SEO person, get them to actually SEO the page for you um, once you've added it. And then there is, I'm, I'm going to show you two ways to actually do this. Um, one, you can just use a visual editor. Here's a visual editor here. Um, you've got everything you can do and say, hi, all this is a page for you guys. Um, what we can do is now go and make that a heading. Right, so Google loves headings in there. Then you can put some, you know, paragraphs in there. Blah, 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 blah. We're adding this page. Have a nice day. And what you can actually do is I'm going to actually bold that. And then this section here, I want this to be a um, click now um, to go to a different page. So one of the things that you can do is almost use it like a word document and I might want to come up in here and say add media. Now what add media does is it gives you the ability to add a picture or something to that effect. So you can actually just go and select files and then go and find a, a image um, that you actually want to upload. So um, let me just go and quickly find an image. Um, let's go marketing images and do to do to do, do, do. Um, and that one's a dollar coin so let me just add that um, so it's actually going and uploading now here's the thing I want you to actually write about images point number three that I really want you to understand if you're going to upload an image my recommendation is put your company name in the image um, always put your company name in the image name and give it a reference of what it is so if you're doing an image on um, training I would go black belt business uh, maybe hyphen training or black belt business hyphen training courses why is that you're going to ask well if you upload an image that's a stock file that's um, just left the stock number in there one two three four five or if you've got an image that um, is um, something different one thing you want to do is be able to search for that image so if I go into um, black belt business um, and then look at images and search the images you will find that I'm actually ranked quite up on there. For instance, there is my logo. There is mine. Um, that is me there. Um, that is me there. Um, that's not me. That is me there. Um, do, 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 where is it? There'll be more. That's mine now. Um, that's mine now. That's mine now. So you can actually see you can get some very, very good. Um, that's mine now. That's mine now. Um, you can actually see that you can get ranked quite well from an image's point of view. If you left it as a image that was number, you know, you see them all the time. Um, IMG seven eight four five, um, which is your phone image or something like that. You can just see that people are just upload them there, and you know they're not going to be able to find your site on the images. So make sure you actually 
do when you upload an image, give it an actual proper name in the web. Um, so what you can do is when you actually upload the image here, you get to choose whether you want it the left of the text, in the center of the text, don't image it. I'm gonna say left of the text and insert that into the page. And you'll see that come up in a second. And there it is there. And again, being a visual sort of editor, you can actually change it there. Now I wanna put a hyperlink. So see this click now? I'm gonna highlight that because I want someone to do something with it. I'm gonna edit that and actually put in a, a website in here. So let me go blackbeltyourbusiness.com and say, and I'm gonna open, tell it to open this in a new tab. You can give it a title if you want, Black Belt Business, da 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 da, that's fine. And what you've gotta do when adding a new page, here's a couple of things you need to actually understand. One, over here, page attributes. Do you want it to be part of a parent or by itself, a page by itself? So you might wanna put this page under, let's say the directory item listings, um, or you might wanna put it under the news, um, menu item. Um, it's not exactly where it goes on the menu item, but it's just whether you want it to have a parent page or not. Um, so you might have um, services and under there you've got five services. So the five pages for your services you'd put under the services um, page or you can leave it as no parent. Um, I'm not gonna get in the default template just yet, but here's the kicker on a couple of things. If I keep moving down, do you want a sidebar on the actual image or on the page, sorry, or do you want to disable the sidebar? And what the sidebar does is do you want the sidebar and you might have, you know, get a free quote now, you might have your blog postings or some listings of blog postings on your sidebar. You may have some sidebar information. Um, I don't have a sidebar on this site, so I'm going to say disabled because I want it the full width of the page. Um, now, the other kicker you wanna do on this is turn off comments on a normal page. Make sure your discussions button is highlighted. To highlight the discussions buttons, if you don't have it, go to screen options and turn on discussion. Um, so this will be point number four, I think we're up to. Turn on discussion under screen options and turn off comments because you will get a whole heap of spam. I love spam not. Um, so turn off comments on pages. And then here is the kicker. This is a plugin called WordPress SEO by Yo. Some people like all in one SEO, not fast, they're roughly the same. What you will do is this is what Google will go and look at for your actual page. So up here is what Google will actually show on the um, Google search terms. And you could put a keyword in here called webinar training. That's what I want to actually be seen as. Um, and as you can see, it's telling you whether it's actually good or not. So it's not in my article heading. So see how it says here, training for webinar and webinar training. So that's not showing it there. But if I actually come back and change my heading to webinar training, you will actually see that it's going, yay, it likes me. Okay, yes, that's a good thing. So whenever you see a yes, that's an actual good thing. Um, SEO title will be, let's call it webinar training, um, black belt business, or you could actually say webinar training Brisbane, webinar training USA, webinar training Australia. And then again, this is what's gonna be shown in Google. And then you could get a meta description. Um, we do all types of training um, in the Brisbane and global area. Um, and the training is based on webinar training and you can see that that will actually put meta description it's not in the content again we want to make sure the content has something like the words webinar training on there so don't do that by the way what i've just done don't just go at it like three or four times that's a no-no um so reality is that's not going to update my content so let me just get rid of and put one in there um so what will happen, as you can see, it's now got yes in the content. Um, so what it's actually doing there is, remove spelling, this will actually help with your SEO. And a lot of WordPress sites really need WordPress SEO or all-in-one SEO to be able to get out there on Google. That's what Google is going to actually show. Um, and that's where you can change the power of actual Google. So 
what I've done here is I've just added a quick page. It's really simple. If I looked at the text button, that's programming language. That's what a lot of programmers actually do. Um, they'll go and program a whole heap of language in there. You can use a visual editor to be able to, to change it, but I'm going to publish this page. So I'll just reiterate a couple of things for you. One, add new page. Two, give it a good title. Three, make sure you've got a heading in there that's related to um, the actual page for your SEO. Um, choose whether it's a parent page or not. Choose whether you want a sidebar or not um, on the page. And let me, I'll get a site. I'll, let me explain quickly the sidebar and I'll show you how to actually change those sidebars. Here's another site that we did. Um, not recently, this is about a year ago. And let me just go to programs, junior programs, that will do just fine. Um, you'll see here, um, this is a sidebar. As you can see here, there's a sidebar here, click for a free tryout. So we actually put a sidebar in this, um, in this, program um, or in this page. So um, choose your sidebars, please turn comments off. Um, and then what you want to do, as you can see, I've got green lights here. So my SEO is saying average still. Um, orange is average, green is good. Um, it's actually showing you that, you know, I'm doing okay there, but make sure you fill that out. If you do have an SEO person, um, please make sure they're aware so they can actually fill that out properly for you. I'm not an SEO expert, guys. I don't know exactly the wordings and how how it should play in there, um, but that's definitely something you want to do. So I can now go view page and it will actually create that page for me. Oh, it's going to come up black. Sorry, guys. It will be black um, wording in there. I haven't changed the background color on here. Hi, all. This page is for you guys. I didn't use a um, PNG or transparent image file, but that's okay. And as you can see, I've put a hyperlink in there. Um, I can click on that. And as you can see, it's actually um, sent me to my web page. Oh, my internet is going so slow. Stop it. Go to meeting. And that's brought up my, my web page there. Um, now, one thing you've got to realize, though, is remember I've created this as webinar training. I can go to any one of my menu items and it's actually not there. And Rebecca asks that she's having problems with that. One thing you need to actually do is add it to your menu items. So just because you've added the page doesn't mean that you've actually... Um, um, added it to your menu item. What you do need to do when you add a page is go to um, this area here. You go to appearance, you go to menus. And once you bring up the menu, it will take five seconds, five, four, three, two, one. Come on, you bugger. You will see that the most recent page that you've added is here, but it's not in the menu item. So you need to click on that and say, add to menu. And you now will see it over here on the list. And what you can do is drag it up and actually put it wherever you want on the menu. Now, here's a couple of things for you. If you put it so it's in line, um, all the boxes are in line, it will go to the main area of the menu. So if I come here and now refresh this page, you will see up the top here on the menu, you will see that I've actually got um, that item now. And it will come up. And you can see I've got the webinar training menu option on there. Um, you can see that clearly it's added to it. But let's say you wanted to put it underneath one of these options here. See how you've got the drop down? Well, all you would actually do is say, no, I want it here. And you just move it in so it's actually embedded. So um, it actually comes in a bit. Save the menu. And you'll actually see that's now gone from there. So whenever adding a new page, make sure you um, um, add the... Um, uh, add the page, check those items that we mentioned, what page parent, do you want a sidebar, turn comments off, update your SEO Yoast um, or all-in-one SEO. As you can see here underneath webinar, I now have the webinar menu training option. Um, so as you can see here, whenever you add a page, also add the menu item if you want it to be on your menu item. Um, posts are a bit different, but when you add a blog or a post, if I go add new, you will see it's pretty much exactly the same. The only difference when adding a post, and this is extremely important to understand, 
do 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 Okay, you still put a good description in. Remember, I had one called Is Outsourcing Ethical? That post does really well. You'd put all your content in here um, and all of that. What you do want to do is add it to the right category. So under Black Belt Business um, Blogs, I have different categories from marketing to sales to team to a whole heap of categories. So you'd choose a category. Again, when you're adding a post, see if you want your sidebar or no sidebar um, and you can actually turn leave discussions on because if you want people to actually put their comments on the post, great. Um, personally, if you don't get a lot of people reading your post, you know, you'll get a lot of spam. So you'll need a spam program um, to actually delete your spam. I have one client that's posts get written heaps um, and once a month they probably get up to 10,000 spam comments on their actual Posts. So just be careful when adding posts, but it's exactly the same to add a post um, as you do that way. So guys, to get around WordPress is quite easy, but I'm going to show you a plugin um, that you guys would absolutely fall head over heels with. This is how I can actually generate um, a quick, uh, quick, great websites that look absolutely brilliant um, that are fully responsive um, and there's a plugin that you can actually get for WordPress it does cost some money I will stress that if you've got a theme already built this plugin might not work with it um, it may work with it it may not um, you've got to be a hundred percent careful on what this plugin actually does but personally I absolutely love the plugin it is phenomenal to actually have really good WordPress sites that you can actually run yourself. Um, the plugin that I'm actually talking about down here, it's called WP Bakery Visual Composer. Again, it's $29. Um, you can actually take full control of your WordPress site, build any layout with no programming knowledge at all. I'm not a WordPress programmer, but I can tell you now I can build some really good sites um, or I can help build them. I prefer not to. I love my business consulting side of things. Um, but what this plugin gives you the ability to do and check this little baby out. I'm going to add a new site. And what I can do with this little baby is... Yes, you can Nikki cut and paste from a Word document. You can do that, but make sure you go through and edit it accordingly. Um, you can go copy and paste, but you might need to delete some lines and all of that type of stuff. Now, let me get back to this one. Let me just close that. All right, so one of the things you can do is um, new page creation. You still do exactly the same. You still choose the parent. You still choose the um, sidebar options. You still turn off the comments. You still put in all your SEO stuff. But notice up here, this visual component will actually have a back-end editor. If I click on back-end editor, it now comes up with this little baby here. And I can come in here and add an element, and I might want to add a row. So what this row does is, for instance, if I have a look at this website here, notice here, that's a row. That is a row. That po Our portfolio is a row. That is a row. Decorating is a row. This is a row. Our services. These are all rows that you can actually go and create. And what you can do now is go, well, how many columns do I actually want in the row? Do I want two columns in the row? Do I want it to have one third, two thirds? Do I want three columns in a row? So if I go and have a look at Reliable, for instance, this is a two column website. I, I'm still working on it, guys. We're still updating um, uh, this site. Um, but one column, which is the image, and then this would be a one third, two third column. This would be a one column, that would be a multiple. This would be a two column here. You've got words over here and a picture over here. So what you can actually do here is say, let's say we want two columns on this page. And then you can use this wonderful add thing here and go, what do I want to add in here? Do I want to add a contact form in here so someone fills in a contact form? Do I want to add a Google Maps page? Do I want to add a single image? Do I want to add a message box? Do I want to add a accordion? Oh my goodness, guys, these features are just phenomenal on what you can actually do. Do I want to add a call to action? Do I want to add a fancy list, a button, um, a pie chart? Trust me, this is phenomenal on what you can actually do here on this site. So let's keep it basic. Let's say I want to add a text box and you can come down on this visual composer 
and make life so much easier for yourself. Um, you can come down here and just copy and paste a Word document, um, Word document copy, blah, 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 blah. Very similar to what you're used to WordPress. Give it a heading, um, give it some whatever you need to. Um, and here's the really cool thing. I've got some short codes here where I can say also add a button and I'm going to add a large button and I'm going to link that button to, um, let's say I'm going to link that to www. Oops, I better put the HTTP in. Um, actually, let me go do this. I'm just going to copy and paste. Thank you for you letting me use your page, Gail. Um, I'm going to uh, copy and paste that into the link. Sorry, that's where I want it link. The button name I want it to say is how the duty oops, spelling. And what you can do is save that. And what I've actually just done is just created a text box with a button at the bottom of it. And you're going to say, hang on, it doesn't look pretty cool. Now, here's a really cool thing about this. Let's say I wanted two columns with different wording. I can use this duplicate button here. I can come down and now move that to the other side. And I may want an image underneath. So I'm going to come and create a single image. And this is really super cool on this one. And I'm going to come down and go, right, which image do I want to actually put in here? And let me use this um, global map image. I'm going to say set image there. Um, I'm going to put the full size of the image in. How do I want it aligned? I want to put it in the center. And here's the really cool things with an image. I can come down here and say, do I want it rounded? Do I want a border around the image? Do I want an outline? Do I want a shadow? Do I want a circle? So let me put a border around this image and let me make the border juicy pink just to make it stand out. And then if I want it to actually link somewhere as well. So again, I'm going to link that to reliable property repairs and then say save. And guess what, guys? I can say, damn, I didn't want that image on that side. I wanted that image on that side. I'm going to publish this and watch what actually happens. And the phenomenal things that you can actually do with this baby is incredible. Um, very, very good um, good functionality. It really helps a user design really good websites without having to type in a whole heap of programming code whatsoever. Um, and what you'll see here is when I view this page, new page creation, what you'll actually see do, 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 do. it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Okay, as you can see, I've put a pink border around the picture. I've got two easy Word documents. I've got the word Howdy Doody, which actually drops me back to reliable property repairs, as you'll see when it comes up. Um, today 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 cool um, and you can see some really awesome functionality um, with this page and again I have literally um, I, I'm just scratching the surface of what this can do um, I'm in the process of actually building some training videos um, really in-depth training videos on these visual composers but when you buy the plugin they've actually got some online training videos as well um, oops I didn't want that there I wanted that single image on the side um, instead as you can see I easily deleted that. I can duplicate this whole row. So I've actually now got two rows. Um, I can turn this row into a single row. As you can see there, I don't want that image there. Um, you can really get some really, really cool features in this. For instance, I'll delete that. I'll add, um, and let me try and get something that's really quick to do. Let me get some tab options. Um, I can actually come down here and call this tab... Um, do, do, do. I'm wary of time, guys, so I'll only be a couple of more minutes. Um, test one, save changes, tab two, add, and then um, I'm going to add a text box, for instance, and I'm going to add do, 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 blah, 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 save on that. I'm going to call a tab. Hello or save changes. So what I've actually done here, let me just add a, hmm, what do you want me to add there, guys? Um, I can add a YouTube video quite easily. Um, how about I actually add a YouTube video in there? 
Um, let me just quickly find a YouTube video. This is how easy it is to add a YouTube video. Sorry, guys, I'm doing a webinar while doing something else. Um, anyone like skateboarding, let me add Kenny Anderson on there. Um, so all you do is would go to a YouTube video, and this is all part of the Visual Composer, guys. Most people don't have Visual Composers on their site. Uh, most of my clients do because it's easy to actually go and update. So if I wanted to add a YouTube video, I would actually just physically go away. Um, physically copy the um, YouTube link that we've got there, whack it into there, hit save changes and it'll automatically put a YouTube video in there. So what I've just done is easily created a tab option and I'll show you how this actually works. Um, just waiting for the website to update. Cool. And if I go to view page, coming, 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 coming. Absolutely. Partial text box where you have large about with read more. Bit more information on John if you could actually ask that, but the answer is is you can pretty much have what you want. So as you can see, I've just embedded a quick YouTube, and that's quick, guys. I did it really quick. Quick YouTube video um, straight onto the website, and there's another tab in here that um, put in some wording, and then you could have multiple tabs across here in the middle of your page all by using this Visual Composer. One very, very good, easy system to use once you get a head around it. Um, and you can actually turn one easy to use or one WordPress sign into some very, very easy things to actually do. So um, guys, I could, yeah, you know, that's a whole new training session on using the Visual Composer. But as you can see, you can drag stuff down. There's no programming code. I put a YouTube video in there at a click of a button. You can add a Google Maps in there. You can add some raw text. You can put some um, contact forms. You can build a very, very good website. And everything you see here on reliable property repairs, if I have a look at how the Visual Composer is laid out on theirs, um, very, very nice looking site. Um, and you'll see how it's actually looked on the page um, when it comes up, if it comes up. You can see I'm using the Visual Composer and all we've got here is here's a row. Remember there's two columns with an image and that. There's another row. There's an album section that I've added. Um, our services, there's a single image that we're playing with. There's some benefits category. Here's our team with multiple rows. You can see multiple rows with um, the pictures and images that are coming up. Um, there's a single image. That is actually putting the Facebook um, Facebook login in. So I've actually embedded Facebook in there, um, which is easy to do as well. And then there's the contact information with the contact form um, in there. So again, if I wanted to move the contact form up to here, I can actually easily just move that up to there. Relax, Gail, if you're still on the call, that's going to get changed. Um, I won't save this. And if I wanted to update those wordings, I just go edit and off we go from here. Um, the good thing I like about this, I can edit that to whatever I want, save it, update, and it's all changed. Really powerful WordPress tool, um, and I would definitely go and look at the Visual Composer for your site um, to make you know, WordPress such a user, great user thing. Some of the templates that I actually use, and the way I actually can make a website really, really fast and new, um, great with Visual Composer, is I use this, for instance, program, uh, sorry, this template, um, the seven template. And what I can actually do is copy this particular layout here. See how you've got this layout here? You can say, yeah, I like this layout. I can actually copy that layout in Visual Composer onto your page. So I would just go copy and paste, um, come to this page here and then physically just paste it in there. And then all I would do is just go down here and change each one of those areas. Um, and bang, you've got a very good um, WordPress site in you know, a matter of you know 20 minutes to half an hour because you've got so many of these templates. Um, and I love some of these templates that they've actually got on here um, to actually utilize. Um, and it's just just a phenomenal actual site to, to use. Um, and what they've got is just phenomenal. Um, so many different layouts, so many things that you can actually utilize um, on the particular site. Um, okay. 
do you use WordPress from their website or is a program loaded um, into your computer? Um, what it is, the Visual Composer thing I'm talking to you about is just a plugin. So if I actually go to plugins in WordPress, I'm going to leave the page because I'm not going to um, do it. So that Visual Composer is something called a plugin. Um, and what you do with the plugin is, let me just bring up the plugins here. There are some plugins that you should be using. Guys, I know I've gone over a couple of minutes. So I just want to take you to, through two main things, um, the plugins. And what you would actually do is come in and say, add new plugin. And the good thing about WordPress now, I love this functional, uh, functionality. You would actually go add new. Come on, my internet. It's normally not this slow. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. And what you do is you literally go right, Visual Composer, and hit search, and it will go and search the plugin depository. Okay, so here's Showcase Visual Composer add-on, which is the one that I actually utilize. There are some more in here. Um, as you can see, it's had 4,000 downloads with um, some good reviews. Um, it was last outdated three days ago, and what you would actually do um, is install now, and bang, that would load it on your site. Now, be 100 100% percent sure that it won't affect your current site as it is and that's where you probably need to ask your web developer to actually do it um, so you can actually install that as a plugin and automatically in your pages when you go to a page I'll see if one's open um, yep there's one open here um, it will automatically up the top to have classic mode which is a standard WordPress that you're used to or you would actually have one that says back-end editor um, which is that one there and I use the back-end editor to actually actually design um, and modify sites and it's a really really good um, good plugin what I personally do though is I actually buy themes um, and there's a whole heap of WordPress themes out there um, I buy themes that have the visual composer plugin because I'm not a programmer I can't go and easily and embed a um, YouTube video that just looks awesome um, I just can't do that um, I wouldn't want to do that I'd have to go and buy a programmer to do it what you can do with these themes and you know this may upset some of the web developers out there but it's like anything guys 10 years ago a, a big screen TV used to cost you thousands of dollars now I've seen them like a 60 inch TV for 400 bucks um, this is websites as well you used to have websites out there that you needed full programming to need to be done now you don't um, you know this theme here the seven here um, has the visual composer already embedded into it um, as you can see it says layout builder that's what that is there um, it's fully responsive already so what I normally do is I would take a WordPress site um, that may be just a standard WordPress site I would actually copy that site to a development site put the new theme across it put a um, template um, home page on it for instance one that you may like from here um, you know check out some of the photography ones in here as well and then go and make all the font actually work really easily and really quickly um, and the sites are just phenomenal they come up extremely well um, and it all uses the theme and the visual composer to actually run your your site quite well um, I'm doing a fairly large website at the moment um, which has 160 pages and effectively all I've done is copied um, copy the the WordPress onto my development site put the new theme on there changed the home page looked at the internal pages they were perfect they came across perfectly fine and they've got this fully responsive website you know within you know two hours um, so reality is you know it's very easy these days to have some very powerful features um, and very good themes out there just make sure they've got the visual composer um, so a couple other plugins just quickly guys that you want you want to make sure you've got SEO Yoast that's the SEO plugin um, please make sure you've got that you also want um, something called the broken link checker plugin what that does is it search your websites for any links that don't work if you've got some links that don't work Google doesn't like you so broken link checker uh, will actually go and modify your um, and go and check your site for any broken links I deliberately put one on this one this morning as you can see I've created a link called check link on webinar that doesn't exist and this broken link checker you could easily come down and change it 
um, to a different link. That's the Word um, YouTube video that I had and update it straight from here. So I've gone on the sites before where they've had something like 40 broken links all in the site when you load broken link checker up. Um, you can easily go and see what's actually broken on your website and it'll easily you can easily fix it as you can see here now um, without actually having to go into each page and, and modify each page. Um, so guys, I'm going to leave it at that um, in regards to WordPress. It is a powerful, powerful tool and you know, you guys can have some really, really powerful options um, on WordPress in terms of what you're actually capable of doing. Um, and the layout builders, if you've got them on your site, I can tell you now, they can just make some phenomenal, phenomenal sites. Um, you know, to change sidebars, by the way, ah, someone asked earlier about changing footers and sidebars. Um, one of the things is, depending on how your programmer has set it up, your footer and sidebars are under something called widgets here. So I need to find a good site with a widget sidebar. Who could I actually use? Do, 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 do. Actually, I know who I can use. Do, 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 do. Dot black belt. Belt. Um, belt your business wp login.php i'll just use black belt your business that's the easiest way to do it um your footer your footer and sidebar uh effectively most of them should be coded under widgets appearance and widgets and when you've actually got that um in there let me just show you when it comes up okay see how it says default footy here this is where the actual footer is actually shown. So if I actually have a look at the international, see the footer down here? It's got our mission, it's got contact us, it's got latest news. That is actually done here. So our mission, bang. It's got the our mission here, um, committed, spelt wrong, there you go. Um, so that's our mission there. And then the next one is the contact us. So that's just the contact us. Um, and then you've got the latest blog post, which I don't have any blogs on here yet. And then you've actually got the social media um, link to it. So you should be able to, if I wanted to change wording in our mission, you just come in here, blah, 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 come down and save that. And effectively, you'll see down here now when I refresh this page, um, that will actually show you that it's um, updated down here on the, you can see that it's easily added. You can add images, you can pretty much add whatever you want on here, add media, change the headings, make it different colors. Um, you know, so you do it under appearance menus. A lot of programmers hard code the um, footer in their editor. So appearance editor, um, and this is all programming code. Um, sidebars are the same, by the way, guys. I won't take you through that one. Now, this is actual programming code. This is how it's all built in. You'll have a footer.php down here. Um, so on the list, you would just click on footer. And in there somewhere, um, when the code comes up, you will actually see that it's actually embedded into there um somewhere um so yeah you'll see all this programming code you'll see the text in there somewhere so you can actually easily change it there so appearance editor footer or most of my sites guys if you're um on here from me you will find it under appearance and on widgets and you can actually change your footer areas quite simply under that point there so Guys, um, as I said, I can keep going. I do apologize, it's taking way longer. Um, one thing I do want to talk to you about just really quickly, um, if you've got a website there and you want a WordPress site and you want us to convert it to a really good responsive template, there's hundreds of responsive templates out there. Um, I'm happy to actually grab the site, whack it on, um, uh, run the template over it, put a really good template on there. Um, this is another business. I, I, my main business is business consulting, guys and I'm not getting away from that, but I also run another business with a partner um, who's a website guy um, called Online in 5. We are launching the business in a couple of, um, in a week or so. Um, but, you know, we will take your site for $499 um, and pretty much, put a new site in there as long as you give us the content and pictures or take your existing WordPress site, whack it up in there, convert it into a very good responsive visual builder site um, and $220 for your web hosting um, and you will have the ability to go and change your site, make it professional. We've got online videos, what I'm doing now, online training videos that you can easily go in and change and see how to change stuff um, for your site and you'll be able to take control of your WordPress site. Um, 
um, and off we go from there. If you do need development, if you want online calculator tools and anything like that, we don't have those functions. Um, but you know, we do. We can get them done for you, but they just cost more. If you want all the online quotes and all of that, um, there are some great plugins. We've got great plugins for Visual Form Builder and all of that, um, guys. If you're interested, just let me know, and then we'll go um, from there. Um, now, I've got a great question from Rhonda. How do I convert an existing site to WordPress? Um, this is what I personally do to in, um, um, do it. Um, one thing that I do is I create a WordPress site in my development site. Let's say you've got 20 pages in the other site. What I do is I literally just copy and paste um, the, the text from the initial WordPress site. So let me, let me actually show you that, Rhonda. Sorry, let me just go back to PowerPoint because it's going to kill me. Um, this is what I would actually do. So, um, Gail, I'm going to come out of Reliable so I don't kill anything on there on your site. So let's say you create a page and let's say I need to actually copy this text from Tutacan. What I do is I right click on here. I actually go save that image um, and save that image down. We need to be careful that it's the original size as well. But if you've already got images, that's great. So save that image somewhere. I would actually come down and um, go copy that page there, copy that. Um, and then just go to the page that you want to add it to for instance, and then just literally copy and paste the wording across into the visual form builder um, and then just do it that way. Um, that's the way that I would actually do it. Create a new WordPress site somewhere um, and then just copy everything across. When it's live, you move that back to your um, back to your host, which I, again, I would get a developer or something like that to do it. So I would actually come down here and go, right, I want to put that in my text box. So I'm going to edit that text box there and then pretty much just paste it. Um, and then, you know, if you've got 20 pages, it will probably take you a couple of hours to get all 20 pages copied and pasted across. The biggest problem that you're going to have with that, what you need to do is you make sure you copy across your SEO stuff. Please copy across your SEO titles and all of that. If you don't do that, you will lose some of your SEO rankings. So um, if you've got the SEO in there already, you need to make sure that comes across. Now, I've loaded a program um, on, my, um, on my page um, or on my um uh, Firefox that enables me to copy all my tab information, the URLs, the site links, the source code, the links on the page. Um, there's a really, really good plugin to Firefox. I can't remember what the name of it is, but I can find out in a second um, where you can actually copy all that information straight away. So um, let me go to add-ons. Let me just find out what it is. Um, easy copy. Okay, so add an extension to Firefox, for instance, called Easy Copy, and you'll be able to actually copy all those site titles and all of that type of stuff. So if I go copy title link, come down here and um, paste that into a new text document so you can actually see. And there you go, that just copies the page link. Um, and you can copy a whole heap of stuff. So I can actually copy the title link. Sorry, not the right one. Um, I could copy the title and that will actually copy the, the title straight in. Um, so please make sure if you are going to take an existing site to WordPress that you do um, that you do do that. So guys, that's about it for me. I did go over. If there's any more questions, um, let me know. Okay, so to turn off comments of the page, Rhonda, when you're actually in the page, you come up to screen options on the page itself and then hit discussions. Once that's turned on and that's ticked, that will turn it on for all pages and all of that. You do that in post as well. So it's up to dis um, screen options and discussions and that will actually get you around that one um, quite easily. Uh, there was one thing. I know I've lost a couple of people because of timing. Let's say you want to go and edit one page and one page only. Let me show you how to do a quick backup of actually the page and this is really easy to actually do um, you're in the page you want to edit you would go to classic mode you would come across to I know that looks funny but you'd come across to the text um, tab here and what you would do is just highlight all the wording in there you would then go copy that and then go and paste it say into a text document 
right? So that's just copied. Now you've just done a quick backup of that page. Then you can actually go and change as much as you want, blah, 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 blah. Um, and you get halfway through it and you go, oh, no, I've stuffed it. I want to put back the original. All you would do is go back to the text document. You would copy all of that. You would come to the text document. You would then paste it back in um, and then update the page. And you've done a really quick backup of the site um, or that one particular page. And, uh, you know, it saves you going back. WordPress, though, does have revisions. And, um, you know, it can show you that you can actually go back to 19 minutes ago as well. So you can actually click on that and restore the revision back from there. Um, I prefer to do the text because it's just easy to go, here's the original, here's the final, don't like the final, go back to the original, rather than you going through all the different autosaves and revisions and doing it that way. So um, some really cool things there. Okay, what do you do if you find that your page is not responsive, i.e. mobile friendly? Um, Nikki, great question. My recommendation is find a really good um, template, um, load your template up, spend a few hours um, configuring it um, to a responsive site and go from there. You can buy responsive sites, um, but um, like mobile sites particularly, but reality is for your peace of mind and your ease of use, um, I would actually just get um, a, a good theme that's really responsive. Guys, so you know, I buy all my themes through Theme Forest. Um, through theme forest here i'm gonna leave this page no i'm gonna stay on page for the moment um and um, i've got some really good ones saved on my wish list that i'm going to get um and we can actually go from there. So um, under Theme Forest, um, there are some really, really good themes in here. Um, again, the one that I like using, which most of my um, sites are the seven because it's just so responsive. It's not funny. Um, it's very, very good. Um, but what you could do is type in the word IT company, for instance. Um, and guys, we're talking $43 US um, for these type of themes. I would go down and find the themes that actually have the um, the Visual Composer in it. Um, very, very good tool. Um, so if you have a look here, the seven events, calendars, add testimonials. See, the thing is with um, these themes, to add a testimonial, you just click on testimonials, add a new testimonials, and it'll add it to the site automatically. To add jobs or portfolios or things that you're doing, um, to add new team members, Members to you know um, add some benefits to add some partners and clients that you work with just this all comes with the theme it's just so phenomenal for 58 bucks it's just amazing um, you know so for instance I was looking up one for martial arts the other day and I I'm actually going to buy this theme um, it's um, absolutely brilliant, and this one actually comes with the the visual um, the visual composer. Um, so I really really love this um, theme. It all comes with the um, it's a responsive design um, and comes with the visual composer as well. So um, you know, absolutely brilliant. And my recommendation is go with a live preview, and then you can actually see what the theme actually does as well. Um, so that makes life easy. Um, and see the theme. So this is a preview on what's actually happening. Um, and off you go from there. So some really cool stuff. Um, I've got another question. How can you duplicate a page? Um, when you use the seven template, um, for instance, the one I use, they don't have a duplicate page button. But what I would do is I would just do like a backup, copy it, um, copy the text, all the text in the one, paste that into the new page and then just go edit accordingly um, and do it that. So that's the easiest way to do a page. Um, all right, so guys, that's it about from me. Um, hopefully you got some value. Guys, if you are interested in us updating your website, just send us an email. More than happy to actually get that done for you. Um, it is minimal cost to get an amazing responsive website. If you do have programming in there, that won't, will be extra. But if you want a, just a great site that looks awesome, that works really well, that you can update yourself, more than happy to help you get that done, guys. So hopefully you got some great value out of this and can understand a bit more about WordPress. Um, um, I will catch up with you shortly and have the best of all days. All right, bye for now.